Hey guys, welcome to part one of my QGIS tutorial on hydrology. In this video, I will cover how to display runoff channels in your field. Runoff channels can be used to predict water flow on your site. Before I get started, I do need to thank GNC Imaging Solutions for providing me with this workflow. GNC is a drone powered imaging company that operates in Saskatchewan. So if you are in Saskatchewan and you do not have a drone of your own, these guys will come and collect and process your data for you. You can find out more about them by visiting their website, gcimagingsolutions.com. I'll provide a link in the description so you can go and check them out. You can see that I've already loaded into QGIS the uh, D digital terrain model that I created with Pix4D as well as the, uh, um, the ortho mosaic that I created. So the first step uh, for doing our runoff channels is we need to we may need to reproject our um, our digital terrain model so in order to do that we're going to go into our raster drop down menu here we're going to go to projections and we're going to click on this warp right here now in warp we're going to uh, this is our input file our output file we'll need to select uh, I've made a file for this on my desktop so we can find it, QGIS Hydrology in here and I'm just going to label it Reproject and we can hit save and then we're going to need to click this tar target SRS box and select this one right here um, for myself it is NAD 83 UTM Zone 12, I believe. Yeah, Zone 12 North. Uh, it won't show up in here for you right away. You will have to go uh, and search through these. It's close to the bottom for me. Um, search through these and find the one that is relevant for your area. So you can hit OK and close that one. And we should be able to hit OK here, and it'll run process very quickly. And there you go, you can see that we've got this new reproject uh, layer that showed up here. Um, if we want to get a kind of a better look at this, we can change the style. I like to, um, just to get a little bit of a better idea. I, I find the black and white hard to look at. There you go. Uh, as you can see, the red areas here are what's going to be high, and the lower areas are what's going to be blue. Okay, so now that we have um, re done a reproject on our digital train model, we're going to clip out the area that we want to be uh, working on. So this is what I've used this. Uh, this is what I've brought in this ortho mosaic for, just so we can see the area that we're doing. Uh, what we're going to do now is add a shape file, hit the polygon, we want to make sure that we're in our project CRS here, and we should be able to hit OK. We'll save it in here as working area. I've already got one in there from previously, yes, we'll just replace it. OK, there we go, and now we'll edit that. And we'll just highlight, we'll just do the south, south portion of the field here. So we'll select our area. Um, we'll go around the yard site. Include that oil field lease there. And right click to finish. Should be able to hit OK. Now we have to hit save for our layer. OK, so now to clip this, we'll go into our raster um, menu here extraction and we'll click on the clipper we'll select our reproject to DTM our output file we can put it in here we'll just put it as uh, clipped DTM we have to hit this mask layer and make sure that the working area is selected we should have no other ones in there and we can hit OK and there you go, as you can see it's clipped out that. So the next thing we need to do, um, we need to open our toolbox over here. 
can get rid of the layer styling for now. And we're going to use we're going to uh, look up G D A L. Here we go, convert format. So we'll double click on that one. And this is just to make the file a little bit smaller. Um, you can choose whatever you like. We might as well make it. We'll try 75%. And we'll hit run on that. Perfect. So now we have this converted one. We can turn all this other stuff off. Just close it up so you can see what we're working on over here. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is fill sinks. So we'll type in here in our toolbox fill sinks. We want to be using this Wang and Lee. Um, the only thing you'll need to yeah, you want to make sure that you're on the converted uh, DEM here and if you change this number um, a higher value is just going to mean a more simplified filled DSM so we'll just leave it as default for right now make sure the rest of these are all um, all included just wait for it to finish here and there you go, you can see it's come up with a whole bunch of new things for us on the side. You can just turn them off. This is the watershed basins, the flow direction. Um, the filled DEM is still on. Or is on now, and we can turn that one off. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is make our catchment area. So we can just write search catchment area in here. Um, we'll hit this flow tracing one. We need to make sure that we're using our fill DEM and this row 8 is good here we can just leave all these settings it's not gonna do a few of them but that's okay we're gonna get what we need out of it And there you go, you can see that it has um, created our few flow accumulation. So the next thing we want to do then is uh, create our channel network. So back up in our toolbox search box here, we'll hit channel network. And we can double click on channel network. We're going to want to use our flow accumulation. Uh, we're going to want to use our flow directions that we processed earlier, our integration grid. Oh, sorry, this is going to be our um, filled digital elevation model. This is going to be our catchment area, our flow accumulation that we just calculated. And we need to switch this to greater than. And for our initiation threshold, uh, the higher the value in here, the less channels we're going to see. So if we leave it at zero, we're going to see lots. Um, we'll try, let's say, 500 as just somewhere to start. And we can hit run. So now you can see it's showed up here. We've got a whole bunch of things. We can get rid of a whole bunch of them. Uh, this flow accumulation. Okay, and we will... I just like to uh, change this. I find that it is a little bit easier to read uh, with an RGB instead of just the black and white. So we'll hit apply there. Uh, as before, I have to invert it before it shows up. There you go. And there you have it. This is a good representation of how the water is going to flow across this field. 
So you can kind of mix and match, um, change your transparencies. Uh, say on the field DEM here, we want to change our transparency so we can see through to our ortho mosaic and behind it. Apply there, that's maybe a little bit much. You can kind of mix and match here however you want. Um, but yeah, this is a really good really good way to kind of get a good idea of how things are going to flow, especially if you're looking at a new piece of land or uh, for whatever reason you might need this information. It's, it's useful for lots of things. So there you have it. That is part one of the QGIS hydrology tutorial. Again, I'd like to thank GNC Imaging Solutions. Uh, go find their link to their website in the description below. Uh, thanks again for watching this tutorial video. We'll see you next time.